in the last stream, we were working on expanding out the base with these two new wooden spheres. And we also worked on completing some of the quests in the basic automation quest line. Specifically, we got our first configurator as well as our first set of basic mechanical pipes and basic logistical transporters. Now, between streams, I've done a couple of things. I have kind of tidied up this pipe here a little bit before it was uh, a little bit zigzaggy and a little bit uh, haphazard, but now it's a, a lot more clean. And uh, if we head on down, I've also added a few more storage drawers to give us a little bit more space for some of the resources that we're going to be getting a large amount of. Uh, things like sand, red sand, and cobblestone. And um, I think right now we're, yeah, full on all of these. The good news is that it seems like the logistical transporters are at least somewhat smart because as you can see here, it's not trying to pull the sand out because it knows that the drawer downstairs is actually full and it can't actually send the sand anywhere. Uh, the bad news is that the block breakers are not so smart and so they do keep trying to break the blocks and then just spew the blocks on the ground, which is not really ideal. So one of the things I would like to do today is potentially start looking at increasing the capacity of these storage drawers so that maybe we can hold more and, uh, and stop the items spewing on the ground. We could also kind of rectify that by starting to use some of these resources automatically. For example, one of the things I think we would like to get done in today's stream is auto sifting, right? We have an auto sift down here. If we can get the auto sift up and running, we can start taking both the red sand and the regular sand and sifting it automatically. If we do that, we're of course going to free up more space for those block breakers to send sand over. So the next quest along in basic automation here is the uh, logistical sorter. As the description says, it allows you to sort items, uh, set an item color in the filter and change the color of the pipes using the configurator. So to make this, we need three basic logistical transporters along with four bronze ingots and two constantan ingots. Now, another thing that I have been doing between streams is sifting gravel. Um, I've been taking some of our smooth stone, compressing that into compressed smooth stone, hammering that down using the uh, compressed hammer into gravel, sifting that gravel over in our sieves over here. I did make a few more flint meshes, so we now have uh, six in total. We're just missing three if we want to fill up this uh, this full nine sieve array. But uh, long story short, uh, I've been sifting gravel. I've also been sifting the sand and the red sand, producing copper, tin, and nickel, and then combining that copper, tin, and nickel into bronze and constantin. Over in the old smeltery here, uh, right now we have two constantan ingots left in there, but uh, down in this chest, we have five blocks of bronze and four blocks of constantan, which should hopefully be more than enough for uh, what we're going to work on in today's stream. I'll also go ahead and uh, claim those quests there. Why not? So back over at the crafting station, we do have four basic logistical transporters. And so if we do something like this with four bronze, and to Constantin, we get our first logistical sorter. Now, um, I believe that a lot of the crafting recipes here are going to require logistical sorters, so we are going to have to make a few of these if we want to progress on. Before we do that, though, I would like to kind of show off how the logistical sorter works and how it can be a very powerful tool for us going forward. So uh, to show that off, I am going to have to make a few more of these uh, basic uh, logistical pipes, which uh, thankfully should be very easy for us to do now. Beautiful. So essentially, the way this works, let's imagine that we want to auto sift sand. So one thing we're going to want to do today is get an auto sift, and we're going to want to send all of our sand to that auto sift, right? We're going to want to send both regular sand and red sand to be sift because we need to sift both if we're going to get copper, tin, and nickel, right? So let's go ahead and quickly grab a chest, and let's do something like this and like this, right? So what we can do is if we put the logistical sorter down on our draw controller, because remember the draw controller has access to all of the items in all of the adjacent drawers. What we can then do is we can then do something like, uh, let's say this and connect that up. Now I don't really want that connected to the crafting station here. And so what I think we can do if we grab our configurator, I believe we should be able, if we set this to items mode, to right click, shift right click, sorry, shift right click, and then shift right click again, that will disconnect the uh, the connection there. And you can do that for any inventory, of course. And now over in the logistical transporter, uh, we have this UI, which at first glance is not necessarily the most intuitive, but uh, essentially the way that this works here is you set a filter to tell the logistical transporter what you want it to extract. So for example, let's say we want to pull planks round into this drawer, right? 
all we should have to do is go new filter. I think we can go item stack here, and then we can put in the oak plank. We can click save, and that should start pulling the oak planks out of their drawers and sending them around into the oak chest. Now, let's imagine that we wanted to send oak wood over to here, but that we wanted to send, uh, let's say, flint. That's not flint. Flint over to this drawer here. This is where the logistical sorter actually gets quite powerful because what we can do in here, as it mentions in the quest book, is uh, we can assign colors. So I'm fairly certain what I want to do here is shift right click on the pipe to change the color. So any pipe in the network, you can shift right click and you can do it multiple times to cycle through and give this pipe a specific color. So let's go right on through and let's give this one blue, right, the first color. So what we can do now is over in the logistical sorter, we can add a new filter, item stack, flint, and then underneath the flint, there is uh, this box here, which again, by default, it doesn't tell you that this is what you have to click, but you click here and that will cycle through the colors. So if we go blue and save, now it's gonna extract that flint and you'll see all of the flint is in like a little blue box telling the pipes to only send it to inventories that are adjacent to blue logistical transporters. So essentially we can have the logistical sorter pull any item we like out of any connected storage drawer and using the logistical sorter, we can specifically send it to different inventories, which is super cool. Uh, and we can take this even further because as you'll have noticed in here, there are multiple different things that you can filter for, right? We've been using item stack, but there are other things that you can filter for as well. For example, if we uh, look at sand here, uh, you'll see it says Minecraft call on sand. I think by default that doesn't show up. Yeah, so you wanna hit F3 H, that will, you'll see in the chat now, it says advanced tooltips shown. So by default, it will look like this. It'll just say send Minecraft. If you hit F3 H and then hover over, you'll see now it says Minecraft call on send. And if we hold control, you'll see there are a bunch of tags here, right? For all of the different like junk in the, that goes on in the back end with, uh, with Minecraft. Essentially, the only thing that we care about is uh, this tag that's about halfway down. It says forge call on send because red sand also has forge call on sand. You can see it's like the uh, third or fourth line down there. Uh, it says forge call on sand. So both of these have the forge call on sand tag. And what that means is that over in the sorter, if we go new filter tag, and then we type in forge call on sand and then click save. Now we have a filter that will pull out anything that is sand, whether it's red sand or white sand, it will pull it out and send it right now to any inventory that's not colored. But of course, if we wanted to, we could go in here, set this to cyan, click save. And now that would only send the sand to an inventory connected to a cyan pipe. And so the idea here is that once we get our auto save, we could have this logistical sorter extracting from the draw controller and the pipe that's next to our auto save, we could change the color of it to cyan, for example, and it will automatically pull all of the sand out of their respective drawers and send that sand around into the auto sieve to get sifted. So that's the plan there, right? This, I try to show how these worked ahead of time. Uh, we can have the one sorter sent to multiple different uh, inventories, which is gonna help us a ton with filtering things out to where we want them to specifically go. But either way, let's have a look here. Let's see about completing the quest for the pitiful generator. This is going to be our first forte into actually generating redstone flux, uh, AKA power for those who are new to modern Minecraft, um, which is definitely something we're going to need if we're going to run the auto hammer or the auto sieve because these guys uh, need power in order to work. So uh, to make this, we need uh, another logistical sorter. We need four furnaces, two cinnabar dust, and two blast furnaces. Uh, these again, made with five crucibles, compressed cobblestone, and regular furnaces. So basically, uh, we just need a ton of cobblestone here. Uh, we need to make a ton of compressed cobblestone. And then from there, we need to make a bunch of furnaces. And at that point, I think the only thing we're going to be missing in terms of making some blast furnaces is uh, the fired crucibles, which shouldn't be too difficult. I did, as I mentioned earlier, do a bunch of uh, gravel sifting. Uh, and so we did get quite a bit of dust, which I then crafted into the, the block that is dust uh, and placed into this hopper. Uh, so right now we do have 66 blocks of clay ready to go. Quickly craft those down. And I'm fairly certain that we should still have a good amount of dust available uh, in here. Yeah, we got stacks of, uh, of dust ready to go. So boom, boom, and boom. So one, two, three. Uh, we'll throw that in over here. We are probably gonna wanna make more uh, because I think by default, the pitiful generator here for my testing produces about 30 redstone flux per tick. It doesn't tell you specifically how much power it generates, which is a little annoying, but I think it generates about 30 RF per tick, which 
is not terrible. However, the auto sieve and the auto hammer both require 40 RF per tick. So we are going to need at least two of these if we want to run either one of these at the maximum speed. Okay, so a few more fired crucibles later. We now have six of those, which is the perfect amount required to make two blast furnaces. And from there, that should be pretty much everything outside of another logistical sorter to make the pitiful generator. So logistical sorter, again, these are nice and cheap now, especially once you have the bronze and the constantin. Uh, let's grab one more cinnabar dust, boom and boom. And there we go, we have our pitiful generator. Following that quest, there is a quest for the basic universal uh, cable. This is just a cable that can move redstone flux. And again, is super easy for us to make. It is just uh, two bronze and one set of our dust. You do get eight at a time, which is perfect. And that is that quest complete as well. And so out of the auto hammer and the auto sieve, I think I'm going to go for the auto sieve first, because I think this is going to be the one that gets us more bronze and more constantin. Uh, which is definitely the resource that's going to be limiting us going forward, I think. So uh, to make the auto sieve, we need two more logistical transporters, two basic universal cable, four glass, and one sieve. That is actually not too difficult of a recipe, all things considered. We know we can make two more logistical transporters. We already have the universal cable. We probably have some glass lying around. We do. And I did go through and try and organize my inventories just a little bit uh, between streams, so hopefully they're not quite as bad um, as they were last time. And so I guess the only thing that I'm missing here is just one regular sieve. For now, though, we do have three sieves over here that are currently not doing anything. And so I think, just to save time, I will quickly just steal one of these. And that should give us pretty much everything that we need to make our first auto sieve here. So, boom and boom. Auto sieve acquired. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I think these require 40 RF per tick. They do. Um, again, for those new to modded Minecraft, FE and RF are both interchangeable. So FE is forge energy per tick. RF is redstone flux per tick. Uh, they basically mean the same thing. You'll see in the top left there, it says zero RF, but then in here it says uh, zero FE. The, the same thing, they just used interchangeably. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if we put down the pitiful generator, unfortunately, this one doesn't mention how much power it generates. However, uh, if we grab some fuel, uh, we do have a lot of this uh, tiny coal here. You get it from sifting gravel. We can put that in and it's going to start generating redstone flux, which is then going to be deposited into the auto sieve because they're adjacent. Uh, we could also, of course, if we wanted to uh, put the auto sieve further away and then use basic universal cable uh, to connect the two up. Uh, for now, though, that is not strictly necessary, although we will be moving these uh, very shortly. They're not going to stay here um, for very long. Uh, but in here, you'll see right now it says no mesh. So all we have to do now is grab a mesh to put in there. For now, I'll grab one of these flint meshes. Uh, shift right click, by the way, to pull those out. We'll drop that in like so. And now we have a working auto sieve. If we take some red sand and we drop that red sand in here, uh, the little guy in there is going to begin automatically sifting the sand for us. Now, one nifty little feature of the auto sieve that I don't know if we're going to use too often, but uh, you can use if you like, um, is you can speed these guys up by feeding them. So if we take one of our cooked apples here and right click it onto the auto sieve, you'll see in the top left now, we now have a 5.5 .5 speed boost and you'll see that that guy's arm is really just going wild. That's probably gonna be a dislocated shoulder, but uh, he is sifting significantly faster, uh, at least for the time that the apple is effective. It doesn't last forever. Uh, and you'll see that we are kind of tanking through the, the power there as well in the top left, but uh, he does sieve a lot faster for a short period of time. So I think what we're probably gonna do is maybe repurpose this room here for our sieving automation and our crafting automation. I'm thinking I might move these sieves uh, kind of down underneath because hopefully we won't be doing too much more manual sifting uh, going forward. And we do need quite a bit of space to uh, to set things up, right? Um, and I think what I'll probably do is that uh, we can get rid of these pipes, of course. These are not going to uh, stay here. Um, I think we'll try and move this logistical sorter underground, like under this, I say underground, under to the lower level of the base, and then maybe put it like right here, pulling down, and then have the pipe kind of run under the floor and along the corridors, right? Like kind of under here and over this way. And at that point, we could even maybe put some glass in like the middle here so you can see uh, the pipes kind of shooting the items around the base. I think that could look pretty uh, cool. Okay, so we had a few technical difficulties and I'm not quite sure where we left off for the YouTube video. But uh, just to catch everybody up, I spent a little bit of time with the Twitch chat here, uh, kind of redesigning the floor 
of this main room here with uh, some glass and these science blocks so that we could see these uh, logistical pipes that we have coming from our logistical sorter, which of course is connected to our draw controller. And this is kind of the design that we have uh, landed on for the time being uh, with the ability for us to send pipes off in each direction. Uh, we might end up adding more spheres kind of like over here and maybe over here in the future. But for now, the idea is that we're gonna take this autosave and we're also going to go ahead and take the factory that we made a few episodes ago, which I believe is actually over here. We might as well also grab these wooden hoppers as well, although we're not really going to be using them for this uh, setup that we're about to work on. And the idea is that over in this room, we're going to have, I think, probably, ideally, three autosives. Uh, right now, we just have the one, but I think... An ideal setup for us at this point in the game is going to be to have three autosives, one for sand, one for red sand, and one for gravel. We're then going to send certain resources into these factories. Um, for example, I think the three resources, or at least the first three resources that we're going to want to uh, craft in our factories are gonna be the tin pieces, the nickel pieces, and the copper pieces. That's going to allow us to automate the production of all three of those resources. On top of that, I'm also thinking that I might look into auto-crafting the dust that we get, uh, the dust dust, not to be confused with the block of dust, uh, but I'm thinking we might auto-craft this dust that we get from sifting gravel, just so that we have the blocks of dust ready to go should we want to automate uh, something like the production of clay blocks going forward as well. Um, for now though, uh, let us head on underneath here. And I think what we're gonna do is we're going to have the logistical pipe go into the back of here, like that. And then we're gonna make a new logistical sorter that's going to extract from the bottom, like that. Uh, both of these should be fairly easy for us to make. We have a bunch of logistical pipes. And so if we head on back uh, over here, right now our crafting station doesn't really have much of a home. I'm gonna put it down over here for now, but we could really do with finding a new location for that. But uh, if I just grab some of that bronze real quick, we should then be able to make uh, some more logistical pipes. And from there, we should also be able to make another logistical sorter. Nice. So essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to have the sand come along the floor, along this pipe right here. And it's gonna head on up, of course, into the autosave, like that. We're then going to have the logistical sorter extract from the bottom here, like that. And in here, we're gonna do a few things, because we also wanna have another pipe going up into the factory like that. And this is where the uh, the coloring of the pipes is really gonna come in useful for us. So let's imagine that this is where we want to send copper because that is what we've put into the factory. So we want to send all copper ore pieces to this factory here. As we showed earlier, all we should have to do is go new filter, item stack, copper ore pieces. So we'll set this to red and then save. And then over here, what we should be able to do if we grab our configurator is set it to item mode and then shift right click on here until we get to dark red. So now that's set to dark red, that should extract the copper from here round to here, which is then gonna be crafted. And then I guess from there we do want to extract again. And so what I might do actually is I might move that pipe. So much like with the autosave, if we just do something like this, we can then disconnect this guy, like so. Uh, once again, make sure this is set to dark red like that, uh, and then again, we can put a logistical sorter on the bottom uh, to pull out the final pieces of copper and send those around to wherever we want them to go. We do also want to add, of course, um, another filter to this logistical sorter to pull out everything else. Um, so again, if we look at, uh, let's say red sand, the red sand here, we're going to sift it and we're going to get uh, cinnabar, nickel, and copper. Now the nickel is going to go to another factory, right? So we're gonna have another factory, uh, maybe just like here, and then a third one over here. Let's say this second factory is gonna work with nickel, and we would assign another color to nickel, and then filter in this auto sorter uh, the nickel pieces to go to that specific color. But then we also want to have certain resources like the cinnabar head right back around to this draw controller. And so I'm thinking what we probably want to do here is add, and I forget we don't have a uh, an elevator that goes down to the lower level here, uh, but I'm thinking we probably want to add another pipe here that kind of pipes back into the uh, into the draw controller. So something a little bit like this and this. Now 
Now let's remove these uh, filters here because those no longer need to be here. They were just for tests earlier. Uh, otherwise they would cycle forever. Uh, but essentially I'm thinking that if we can change the color of the pipe on the back of the draw controller, we can then use that as kind of like a default place to send all of our, uh, all of our resources. So I'm going to temporarily break this glass here just so we can get to that, uh, that pipe. And then from there, let's go ahead and shift right click here. And I think we'll set this to maybe like black, which I think is the last color in the line. It is. So now black is the location that we're going to send um, everything that we want to return to our draw controller, right? So any uh, system that produces something that we want to pump back into a storage draw here in the center room, we're going to just send to the black color. So back over here, uh, we want to send Cinnabar to the black color. So let's go out and grab one piece of Cinnabar. And we're going to do the exact same thing here, but just add it to a different colored filter. So item stack, Cinnabar, and black. Set. And uh, by the way, here you can left click to go forward and you can go right click to go back. So just going back from non takes you directly to black. Save and done. So all we really need to do now to get this uh, specific setup up and running, I think is just kind of connect this up and then go and add red sand to a filter that we're going to send to maybe just the red color. Not to be confused with dark red, there is red and dark red. So dark red is being used here for copper. Normal red, which is a little confusing. And I don't know why there's not an orange. I don't know why it's red and dark red, but uh, normal red is what we're going to use to extract red sand and send it around to that auto sieve. So new filter, item stack, red sand, and red, save. Uh, so now what we should hopefully see is that stuff getting extracted and being sent around to the uh, the red sieve. So Chen has pointed out the reason this isn't working is that you have to put a mesh in. Once the mesh goes in, we should then start to see red sand being pumped through here. Look at that, beautiful. So it's not super fast. Um, I think if we wanted to, we could make that faster uh, in the future by upgrading our logistical transporters. You can see right now, uh, they have a speed of one meter per second and a pump rate of uh, two per second. Whereas uh, if we look at the higher tiers here, uh, we could upgrade it to two meters per second and then four and then uh, 10 with the ultimate logistical transporters. But for that, uh, we are going to have to get a metallurgic infuser, which is a little bit out of our price range right now, given that we don't have iron, redstone or osmium. But uh, the basics here are actually working. It, sa it sends a stack at a time, which is perfect. This is now receiving sand. And so the only thing that we have left to do here is actually power this, uh, this auto sieve. As I mentioned earlier, I'm fairly certain that the pitiful generators that we made produce about 30 Fe per take. So if we're going to run three sieves, uh, three sieves are going to use 120 uh, Fe. Each one uses 40 Fe per tick or RF per tick. So if we're going to run three sieves, that means that we would need four pitiful generators. Those would also produce 120 redstone flux per tick. And uh, the idea there being that we could then do something maybe like this and like this uh, that would provide power to both this sieve and the one we're going to put here we could do the same thing on this side because we're going to have another sieve that goes here and a third one that goes here like that with more factories here and here uh, this guy should restart uh, should start receiving power just as soon as we get some tiny coal into that pitiful generator and one of the other added benefits of sifting gravel automatically which we're going to do along with the two colors of sand is that we're going to get a consistent supply of tiny coal, which hopefully we can then just auto pump into the pitiful generator using the same system of pipes and logistical sorters to ensure that our sifting system is self-sufficient and ideally never goes down. So that's the plan. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and make two more auto sieves, uh, two more factories, and I'm basically going to uh, replicate this system that we have here with regular sand and gravel. Okay, so quite a while later and we now have three auto sieves and three factories all set up to automatically receive red sand, regular sand, and gravel, sift those materials, and then over here, we're processing copper pieces, tin pieces, and nickel pieces. Now, I did make quite a few changes to this system um, after a few recommendations from the Twitch chat, so I'm just gonna quickly walk through how this thing works in its entirety. So over by the draw controller, everything is still the same. We still have the logistical sorter pulling things out. We have red sand being sent to red, regular sand being sent to yellow, and a gravel being sent to purple. And then we still have the pipe on the bank uh, set to black for everything that is being returned. 
Over here, though, we got uh, red, yellow, and gravel. So the, all of the uh, different resources are being sent to their respective sieves. From there, instead of using a logistical sorter to pull out of each sieve, what we've done instead is we've put all of the sieves right next to each other and used wooden hoppers to extract the uh, things that are coming out and send them down into this chest here. So uh, each sieve has a hopper. Those hoppers are funneling to that middle hopper, which then sends down to this chest here. So everything that we get from sifting ends up in this chest. This chest has a logistical salter on it and items like cinnabar and nitre go to the, uh, the black pipe, which is the one on the draw controller. These three, the copper chunks, the nickel chunks, and the tin chunks all go to aqua. So aqua is the color being used up here. So these three pipes are all set to aqua. And the reason that we can set them all to aqua is that the factories will only accept the items that are used in their recipes. So even though in theory, tin could go into this factory, this factory will not accept anything other than copper or pieces. So we can set all of these to the exact same color and everything just goes there as intended. Then things get a little bit more janky because what we have here is we have the same system where we have three hoppers pulling out of those factories, uh, but then we have three more hoppers that kind of funnel those items around and into this chest. So we effectively have like a pipe made up of wooden hoppers that pulls all of the finalized chunks out of the respective factories, down, around, and back into that initial oak chest. So all of the or pieces are sent through to the factory, crafted, and then sent back down to this chest here. And now the final thing that we need to do to uh, finish this off, I guess, is uh, add these to the logistical sorter filter, set them to black so that all of these chunks go through to the draw controller. And of course, if we are going to do that, we're going to have to first set up a draw for each of those items. Um, I will come back to that in just a second though, because um, the other final thing that we still need to do is power these, because right now we're still using just the one pitiful generator, which uh, as you can see, is not really doing a great job at powering all of these. Now, initially, my plan was going to be to make four pitiful generators and use the coal that we're getting from sifting gravel to feed them to power the, the sieves. However, the Twitch chat has pointed out that uh, we do have the ability to purchase this wind turbine right here for 15 sea bucks. And I think that's probably going to be a pretty good investment here uh, because unlike the pitiful generator that produces about 30 redstone flux per tick, apparently the wind generator at our current altitude is going to produce about 300 RF per tick and, sh and so should be able to fairly easily uh, power all of these and maybe a few more into the future as well. So let's uh, trade in 15 sea bucks for the one wind turbine. Uh, this guy is from Mechanism Generators. And the way this works is you place it down and it begins generating redstone flux. So we could put it here, for example. And, uh, oh, it needs to have access to the sky, I see. But uh, essentially, this guy produces more redstone flux the higher up in the world that you place it. Now, of course, we do run into a slight problem. And that is that uh, we can't really go that high due to the fact that we don't have the C scale and if we try and go more than one block above where we're currently at, we start to take poison damage. So uh, we can realistically only put ours right about here, uh, but even here, it is producing 384 FE. Uh, we could, if we wanted to try and squeeze just a little bit more out of it, maybe by putting it just a tiny bit higher. Okay, so chat did actually point out, I'm reading the wrong number here. Uh, the 384 is the maximum that this can output. Uh, right now, though, it's producing 117 because it's up a little higher. Uh, previously, when it was down on ground level, it was producing a 113.4, I think it was. Uh, so we have actually managed to squeeze about three extra uh, FE per tick by putting it up in the, uh, the sky there and taking a bit of fall damage. Now, I don't think this is going to be its permanent location. I think ideally, we want to put it up on top of this sphere here and then just run these uh, basic universal cables uh, kind of up through the roof and connecting to that uh, that wind turbine. So I'm going to sleep real quick to get rid of the mobs that have spawned on top of this uh, sphere because this is where our old mob spawner used to be. And we'll see about getting that wind turbine up and above that bowl. So a little bit of uh, pain later, but we do now have this up and it's even slightly higher. It's up at 118.5 uh, FE per tick. So we have managed to squeeze just a few extra uh, redstone flux per tick out of that... Uh, out of that wind turbine there. Uh, but now, if we head on back inside, we should see all three of our auto sieves running at full speed, which is still not incredibly fast, but over time we should start to see uh, more and more 
resources pile up for us to use in the future. And of course, if we wanted to, we could even take it one step further and feed each one of these guys a cooked apple. And that's going to really speed up uh, the rate of sifting here. And you can see that even with all three of them eating cooked apples, the power is still holding steady. It might be going down ever so slightly, but it seems to be holding quite nicely, which is perfect. And you'll see things are arriving up over here. They're going to get crafted. Once they've been crafted, they get sent down. And look at this. The, the pipe system is super janky, but it works. Everything is going where it's supposed to go. All of the resources are being generated. And so now, Chad, all we need to do to finish this up is grab, I guess for now, just one more two by two draw. Boom and boom. Um, and this is actually where the trim could come in quite useful as well, because uh, I'm thinking going forward that uh, we probably want to start filling up uh, kind of this area here with storage drawers, right? Because we're going to want more storage drawers as we go forward. And uh, by default, this right here is not connected to the draw controller. However, if you want to connect a draw to a draw controller that is not directly next to it, that's where trim comes in. So what we can do is we can break this blue terracotta here put down this trim and then put the draw in front of it. Now this draw controller is connected. Uh, sorry, now this storage draw is connected to this draw controller because of that trim. That trim acts as a draw between these two drawers, allowing it to access the draw controller. And so in theory, if we go and add, let's say a copper chunk here, and if we go and quickly steal a tin and a nickel chunk as well, what we should be able to do is uh, drop those in to their respective draw slots, let's say here and here. And now if we go and add all of those to the salter filter and make sure they're all sent to the, uh, the black pipe, they all should end up in that draw. Now, of course, we also want to do the same thing with flint and with appetite and with sulfur and with tiny coal. So let's just start adding all of these here. New filter, item stack, black and copper chunk. Save, new filter, item stack, black, and tin chunk. New filter, item stack, black, and nickel chunk. By the way, if you ever get super annoyed at the non-stop clicking of your logistical sorters, which can get a little annoying, there is, thankfully, this mod right here, the muffler. So if you click that, scroll right down at the bottom of this list, logistical sorter mechanism, just click the mute button, you will never hear that clicking again. It's gone permanently. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the way this works is it gives you a list of all the sounds that you can currently hear, and then you can just click on whichever one you don't want to listen to, and it will just remove it from the game. So if we didn't want to hear to, uh, if we didn't want to listen to the mechanism generator, the wind generator, we could turn that off. Uh, right now we can hear like uh, cobblestone being made up on the surface. If you wanted to, you could find out where that is. So after a little bit of searching, uh, that sound, by the way, is lava extinguishing. So now. We no longer hear the ch sound that you would normally hear there. And if you really want to, you can take it one step further and customize the volume. So by default, when you press the mute button, it goes to zero, but you can then drag it up. So let's say we put it at 100 or 90. We're going to hear it like almost normal volume. But then if we were to lower that, let's say we bring it down to like 20. Now you still hear the sound, but it's no longer going to be quite so loud, I think, once we're down here on this lower level. So a really powerful mod if you really don't like a certain sound in the game. Uh, like I said, specifically, I think that uh, clicker sound doesn't necessarily sound bad, but when you're hearing it, you know, multiple times a second forever, it can get quite annoying quite fast. So you can mute that in its entirety using the little uh, muffler there. And again, it works for almost any sound, which is, uh, which is perfect. Uh, you can press the play button on the sound muffle screen to see what sound you're muffling. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so sorry, chat. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> oh, I had to do it, right? I had to, it had to be done.
so now that we have all of that set up, one of the last quests here on the basic automation page is to make an auto hammer, which we should be able to do fairly easily. We're missing one logistical sorter. And then from there, we're just missing uh, one more compressed stone hammer. Um, I do believe we should have some sticks lying around. We do, but not quite too many. That's fine. So let's grab some more sticks. And then from there, let's also grab this uh, stone that we have pre-smelted. Um, I think I will also do a little bit of an inventory dump here because we have so much stuff that we don't really need to be carrying around with us at all times here. From there, let's see if we can't make nine stone hammers. Boom. And then we can craft those up, of course, into the compressed stone hammer. And that should be pretty much everything once we grab back some of that uh, glass that we just put away. Boom. And boom, we have an auto hammer. So this can be used to basically uh, crush down uh, anything we'd like automatically. It does the same thing that the uh, auto sieve does, but uh, instead of mimicking the process of sifting, it mimics the process of breaking things with a stone hammer. So I think for us, one of the best things that we can do right now is probably going to be the automation of lava, right? Because at the minute, we are generating granite, andesite, and diorite with this uh, cobblestone generator. What we can do is we can begin taking that cobblestone granite and andesite from this draw here, send it around to the auto hammer, which I think we're probably going to want to put somewhere over here. Although, actually, given that our power is all the way over here, I think we probably want it over there, actually. And uh, we are out of cooked apples, which is a little disappointing. Do I still have some cooked fish lying around? I do. I still have 29 cooked salmon. Perfect. So for power's sake, I think we should put this over here somewhere. And then we could, I guess, take all of the, the final products and send them over uh, to the crucible. But essentially, the idea here is that we can take the diorite, the andesite, and the granite, crush that down into crushed diorite, andesite, and granite, and then send that around and over into this crucible right here, thus kind of completing the automation of our lava production. And in an ideal world, I'd also love to get some kind of tank, but I don't think that at the current stage of the game, we have the ability to make any of these tanks because we don't have any iron. So unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to kind of back up on the amount of lava that we can hold. I guess for now, we should probably just pick one of these. I think for now, I'm just gonna take the diorite and uh, begin processing that. that. I don't think there's really a reason to, uh, to hammer down all three resources at the same time. Uh, also, there's not really too much point in leaving this uh, pitiful generator here anymore because we don't really need it too, too much. Instead, I think that we can just do this with the auto hammer. That's gonna provide it with power. So that works. It crushed down the, uh, the die right there. Perfect. And essentially, all we're going to do, we're going to uh, connect that up right about here. And let's give that its own color. Let's go with magenta, I guess, like that. And then again, much like we've done multiple times today, all we're going to do is over here, tell this guy to add a new filter, item stack. We're going to do diorite like so. Make sure that's set to magenta, save, and that should begin sending that diorite around to get crushed. Okay, so again, a little bit of tinkering later, we've moved this uh, back by one, and for now I've moved the uh, hopper botany pot over to, uh, to here. Uh, not a permanent location, but just somewhere to, uh, to make space for this. So we now have the magenta pipe going into the side, and we have the wooden hopper coming out of the bottom there, and then kind of more wooden hoppers going all the way around, and you guessed it, connecting up to this pre-existing pipe. So here, uh, we should start to see crushed diorite appearing. From there, we can take that crushed diorite, and at this point, what we're gonna have to do is run a pipe that goes directly past here, all the way along and over into this fired crucible to keep it topped up. Now, what we did over here is we had to build kind of a glass tunnel around the pipe because by default, the pipes are waterlogged. So they just kind of sit in the water. So as you can see here, we've built like a glass tunnel around the pipe so you can see it uh, as it passes through them. So I think we're going to want to do the exact same thing over on this left-hand side here. Uh, so it kind of just involves getting rid of the glass where there is water, which is basically all of this and then running this glass tunnel along. So we'll do this. Th 
this and... This. Uh, from there, we should just be able to fill that with something like smooth stone to, uh, to get rid of all the water. And then now we should be able to lay those pipes down and be able to see what's moving through them. Okay, so this is now connected up. We've got uh, a pipe going all the way over to the uh, the crucible. A little janky given the, that there's lava underneath the crucible, so we have to go right around it here. But uh, that is connected up. So I think what I'm going to do is grab one of those two by two drawers we just made and put that down here. Uh, the reason for that, and I'm also gonna lock that right away. The reason I'm gonna lock it, uh, and my key is in here, is that I don't want these drawers here filling up with items like flint that we're overflowing on. I don't want my excess flint to end up in here. Um, what I want is I wanna take the crushed diorite that we're producing over here out of this chest and have it sent over to the draw controller. So in here, uh, we can go new filter, item stack, black, and crush diorite, and save. That way, over here, once we add a draw for crush diorite, it should make its way over there. And then from there, all we should have to do is add a new color over here. Uh, let's say that we go to item mode, and let's configure this to be lime. From there, new filter, item stack, uh, crushed diorite, goes to lime and save. Uh, so we should see that get extracted. It should get sent around to the crucible and we should now have fully automated lava. Going forward, we're gonna keep getting diorite from the cobblestone generators up on the surface. That diorite is then being sent around and crushed using the auto hammer. That is then being sent down to a chest, which is sending it to the drawer controller uh, over here for its own storage drawer. From there, it's being pulled out, sent over to the crucible, being turned into lava, uh, which for now is going to back up in the seared tank and also eventually back up in the crucible itself. At some point in the future, it'd be nice to get a tank so we could start storing all of that excess lava. Um, and ideally, Fairly soon, we could even start using that excess lava uh, to produce obsidian in a wooden barrel with uh, witch water. And from there, we could look at making some upgrades to our storage drawers over here with things like void upgrades, which are going to allow us uh, to delete things like excess flint that we don't really want clogging up our system or excess cobblestone, uh, which is still something that we are running into a little bit of a problem with up on the surface here. You can see we are still uh, kind of spewing items ever so slightly uh, due to just the amount that we're producing and not really using and don't have space for. Uh, but those are all problems for future Isaac because for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.